Welcome to the Beacon House Podcast, recorded live in Knoxville, Tennessee. Well, Merry Christmas, everyone. This is your custom Christmas edition Beacon House podcast with our lovely co-host, Grace Steele. Grace, say hi to everybody. Hello, everyone. And we're here to charm you uh, right out of your dang old britches on Christmas Day or Christmas Eve, whenever this comes out. Anyway, Christmas. Christmas. (laughs) Man, Christmas. Grandma got ran over by a reindeer. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. Jingle Happy bells, holidays. Batman smells. Robin laid an egg. <laughs> Freaking Christmas buttholes. So uh, obviously we're pre-recording this, so it's not Christmas yet for us. But let's just say, uh, Grace, how's Christmas shaping up for you? It's going really good. Spending a lot of money that I wasn't, I was in, not anticipating on spending. No, yeah. Um, but yeah. No. What? So did what happened? Did stuff get more expensive, or did you find that you had extra people to buy for? I just found more gifts that I wanted to buy. Yeah. For yeah. people, and so. Even I get though, it. Even though, like, I have them a gift already, it's like I really wanted to get this one. Yeah, yeah. So that's what that's what ended up happening. Dude, I was struggling. There's one person I was struggling to find a gift for, and. I was going through like a bunch of old mail and I found a like a shirt that I had ordered for them like way back in anticipation of Christmas mm-hmm. and I forgot about it and I was almost going to throw the whole pile of mail away and I was I had been struggling to find the perfect gift for this person and I had already gotten it and it was just sitting in my house. Mm-hmm. I'm that disorganized. I'm pretty disorganized too. Shit. Try to be. I try to be organized but this time of the year it's actually this time of the year this year hasn't been that bad. It's actually been a lot easier. Have you noticed that the older you get, the more Christmas doesn't feel like Christmas? Hell yeah. And I I'm was like, talking to my friend I'm like that. 80, so I've been dealing with that <laughs> shit for a long time. It just doesn't feel like Christmas. I know. No matter what. Well, Weather's it, changing. You're yep. getting older. Well, I'll tell you something. People are dying. I've noticed that it, it doesn't feel as inadvertently like Christmas. Like it doesn't just automatically like you. It doesn't just it doesn't feel like somebody threw Christmas on you. But if you if you do the things, if you like do some Christmassy shit, like if you do some like you know, like charity stuff, or mm-hmm. if you like if you, you kinda have to like assume the role that like your parents used to have and kind of make Christmas. If you do that, it starts to feel a little Christmassy. More Christmas I can I can see that. But it but I definitely miss that feeling of being like a kid and it just like started to feel like Christmas. Like something happened the beginning of December. Mm-hmm. You just your eyes just started twinkling and you were like, Whee, I'm gonna I get know. presents. I usually get so excited when I see Christmas lights. Yeah. Um this year. So I have I have gone and driven around neighborhoods to look at Christmas lights. Um and I love it every year. Yeah. But this year just it didn't hit me like it normally does. Yeah. Um also this year is the year that we've told Anna that uh, Santa and Candy Cane, the elf on the shelf, isn't real. Oh, no. You <laughs> dispelled the Santa myth? We did. It was time. Yeah, yeah. It was coming. She's nine. How did you do it? Just kind of just told her, like, hey, sorry. <laughs> just like, hey, kid. <laughs> By the way. Real. Like, you know how we all said, you know, Candy Cane has magical powers and you can't touch them. Really, it's been us moving him around the house the whole time. So she actually took it really well. Um, she didn't cry or anything like that. I, we tried to explain to her now that there are kids that still believe you cannot tell them that Santa's not real. You have to let their parents do that for oh, that's, them. See, that's really good. Um, you know. So. How did you find out? I was actually in Las Vegas. I actually don't think I ever really believed in Santa. Um even was, from like fucking day one, you were like, "Yeah, I this think is I always like sneaky shit." Yeah, I always thought like it just never really added up. You're like, "Ho ho ho, my ass!" But I remember being like ten and being in Las Vegas at my grand my grandmother's house, and um, I was with my cousin, and like they try to be like, um, "Oh, his gift is because I got an American Girl doll," and they're like, "Santa gave it to you," and I was like, "How did Santa know where I was? I'm in <laughs> Vegas. I'm in a condominium." There's no chimney to come down. Like I did that. I was like, <laughs> explain that to me. And so that they told, they told like, us, they told me and my cousin, 
that he wasn't real. So it didn't really bother me. I kind of like, I knew the See, whole time. I grew up time. in a house that didn't have a chimney either. And I don't remember what they told me. And I know I must have gone, well, where did, I think they just told me he comes in the back door. You know, and I remember thinking like, that's creepy. They all come up with like other yeah. ways. Oh, he has a key, got through the window. Yeah, the something plumber, like- The plumbing. <clears throat> yeah. I remember, so I, I legit did believe in Santa. Uh, and I think that's probably just because my parents were really good at selling it. Mm-hmm. Like they, I think they got really into it. And so I was just, their enthusiasm kind of tricked me. But I remember the kid next door had found out. And unlike, like his parents didn't bother to send him out into the world with instructions <laughs> like you did. Yeah. So he just fucking straight up came over and was like, yo, Santa's not real and you a bitch. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> what are you talking about? Of course Santa's real. What do you mean? And he was like, no, Santa's not real. That's your parents doing all that shit. And then like my logical side immediately put it all together and I still refused. I was like, no, you're crazy. And I ran to my parents and I was mad. I was like, he said Santa's not real. He said you guys did that. You guys didn't actually put that bicycle together, did you? You know, which <laughs> the wheel had always been shaky on it. Yeah. Like, Santa does bad work. But like, <laughs> and they were like, so, and I knew then I was like, it's not real. And I actually had a bad, I feel like I had one bad night. Like, you can't believe in anything, you know. But uh, I, that's that's curious to find, like, how, how people find out and stuff. Ah, whatever. Um, you know, so, like, my parents weren't really creative when it came to, like, Santa Claus. I mean, they'd eat, like, the cookies or, like, make a mess or whatever. But with Anna, when she'd go to sleep, I'd get my stepdad's boots and flour, and I would sprinkle flour all over the house. Like, it was, you know, like, we would, so it would be a trap. Like we would be trapping Santa, and so we'd put flour down, and then after she goes to sleep, because it'd be like, "This is how we're gonna catch Santa." I would put the boots on, and I would stomp like I was his feet. So when she'd wake up, she would see male huge footprints in the flour. He like, got we out. Got, we got Santa. He is real. Dang, dude. Yeah, but not anymore. That's good, though. That's really... Oh, we try to be really creative. My stepdad yeah. was super creative with Elf on the Shelf with Anna. Um, but yeah, this year just had to come to an end. Yeah. The magic. The magic. The magic. The magic comes to an end, folks. It does. Well, shit. What else you got? You had some Christmas topics here, I think. We- yeah, I really want to talk about... Um, Bring it out, bro. Unfortunately, this year, I didn't get around to volunteering, and, and which is something that I think is really important to do all the time, not just at Christmas, right. but I think it's really important, especially around this time of year, because um, the holiday season is really hard for people. Yeah, it is. Especially, you know, the homeless. Like, they don't have people... I mean, suicide rates go skyrocket uh, during holidays and during stuff. the holidays just it's so hopeless so so yeah so. i actually just had a, a a friend die a couple of days ago that i just found out Holy himself. Crap. i'm sorry dude yeah it's just and it always seems every year that it's more and more it's happening i know suicide rates amongst like the elderly also mm-hmm. go up during the holidays and stuff like that like i i didn't i remember when i was younger i didn't realize that like suicide was a thing like the only people it was a thing for like the elderly mm-hmm. i knew a lot of people like young people that just kind of never made it out of like uh like puberty and they killed themselves they just couldn't like something happens you know like, and that's super tragic and you hear about that all over the school or whatever but there are a lot of like elderly suicides that are uh connected to seasonal depression and that kind of stuff and it, i mean it's a it's a thing man it's yeah. it, the holidays can be really really fucking uh Dude, it's Hopeless. fucking brutal on people. Yeah. Um, definitely, if your mental health, if you if you got your mental health in check, even yeah. if you do have it in check, the the it still fucks you up. So like volunteering is like a way to like it helps. Just getting out there it helps your your sanity of knowing that you're doing good for others. But then people who need it, who feel alone, see someone if you're genu- you're out there genuinely caring, doing something other for other people other than yourself. So yeah. it, it really does. Cause I, I've volunteered and I've talked to people and they're like, thank you so much for being out here. No one would even think to be out here on Christmas Eve, giving us pie or yeah. coffee or that's one whatever of the things, it is. When I was talking about as you get older and you have to kind of like do stuff to make it feel like Christmas. That's one of the things that I've done in the past too. Like you go help people out, volunteer a little bit or just anything like do something charitable, do something really nice. That tends to make it feel like Christmas 
maybe maybe like a more original form of Christmas than just like mm-hmm. being a kid and getting a ton of presents. Like yeah. it seems like you tap into something older and more foundational. Because that's what Christmas is about. Yeah, giving. Right. Um, yes, yeah, it's, it's not about t- re- receiving and taking. Right. It's about being with the loved ones and doing charitable or for others. Yeah. It's now. It's just turned. We our society and our companies and corporate and money mongers have just turned it into this like money machine of yeah. like buy 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 so like i never watch commercials on television but lately i've been watching more actual cable television than i normally do yeah um man these fucking commercials get you <laughs> like <laughs> dude yeah. they are like one after another yeah, just yeah. like damn marketing team like my kid's sitting there and she's like i want that i want that i want that and it's just like i gotta Whoa. turn the tv off it's like boom boom one after another and i'm like fuck now we know you know where satan gets his minions from these fucking (laughs) marketing advertising uh companies with all these fucking commercials no one can fucking stand it they've staffed hell completely with the marketing department (laughs) from fucking at&t or whatever (laughs) fucking a it's like it's like i've already bought my my kid gifts and she's already had a bit. There's a new. There's like a new toy, a new thing, and it's like oh, just yeah. going. And it's like I've decided. So I've taken Anna actually a couple of years ago to the bridge um, where a lot of the homeless uh, people experiencing homelessness would live um, to try to teach her. You know, like hey, kids and people don't get to grow grow up with the things that you have. Like they don't have it. And she didn't understand that concept. Yeah. Right. Um, she lives in West Knoxville. Yeah, sure. You know, don't judge me. Um, but it seems far from the problems. No, like I grew right. up. So I grew up in West she just, she just, she just didn't. See, it's not common. She didn't see it, and so I took her out there. It was a couple of years ago, and she actually like. It was her first experience seeing it firsthand, not just someone panhandling asking for change, but people like sleeping on the street and like all these things. And she, I could tell like it was a little unsettling. I think I'm going to have to do it again now that she's nine. Yeah. Um, Cause it's been a few years and she's definitely like gotten to that like nine year old stage where she's like, ah, but I yeah. want this. Right. What does right. it matter? Well, and well, you know, I mean, growing up is fucking hard to do anyway, but like, it sounds like you're doing a lot of shit, right? Like Try. props to you, man, for like, well, I all- co-parent with my mom. <clears throat> Well, man, like, I, I, I feel like, uh, I don't know, man. I know a lot of people that have kids, and I don't know how many of them are going out of their way. I'm not saying you're not. If you're listening to this, don't be like, hey, I do, I do good with my kid. Like, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> I know you're a good parent. Shut, shut up. Give me, don't bust my chops. But, but that particularly, like, taking them somewhere to show them things that may not necessarily be pleasant just to kind of arm them with, if nothing else, like the beginning of the experience. Mm-hmm. It's not like they're going to understand the breadth of, of, of like poverty and uh, <clears throat> the homeless, you know, pandemic and or epidemic or whatever the homeless situation. They're not going to understand that in a year or two years, maybe not even in fifteen years. But at least letting them know it's there to start them on, like giving them something to be empathetic about. And for the less fortunate and that kind of thing, I think that's big. It is big too. I feel like people insulate their their kids from that kind of thing for a long time. They do, time. and it's dangerous because it's out there. It's it is out the, there. They need to the learn world. about it, and, and they're when they get older, then they're learning about it. But let's just be honest: if your kids never seen or experienced or knows anything about this when they grow up, they're very sheltered. They become very judgmental of someone who is experienced homelessness. You know, they they might not necessarily open be open to it with open arms and be willing to help i mean let's just be yeah. honest I and, mean, and the, the, what's the worst thing that could happen is they develop a sense of gratitude for the things they do have right and and become kind of well-rounded and they have a charitable spirit i mean i don't know man i, I can't think of a whole lot of things obviously you want to instill in your kids like like a good work ethic and uh, uh, good decision making capabilities and responsibility and those kind of right. things to keep them safe and to get them where they're going but if you can raise a child, I think, and they have, like I said, they have gratitude and empathy and they're, mm-hmm. they're kind and yep. like to others, to, to others. all, I think that's like a, a huge thing. Yeah. Um, and that's really important, uh, to me for Anna to learn. I need, I want her, I need her to learn. She's also biracial. I need her to learn that like there are all sorts of different people in this world and a lot of people are judged. You will be judged based on your color of skin. This person's going to be judged based on where they sleep. 
you know, and and I'm judged based on because I'm Grace Steele. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> damn, that's Grace Steele. <laughs> you know, um, also look at, like look a, at, a there you go. There go Another girl. thing that I've always uh, been adamant about talking to my mom and everything is no pets for gifts. Talk about that. You mentioned this yeah. a little while I back. I can't stand it. I was very struck by this. Go ahead and give us your... Give so us your, I, worked give us young, I worked at an animal shelter here in Knoxville for a, a good minute. And um, so always around the holiday time. So there's like uh, Christmas and Easter and then, of course, on birthdays. We get people being like, oh, are there puppies or kittens? You know, wanting to buy a gift for their 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 kids, right? And, and same with Easter. They want ducks or baby chicks, right? Yeah. Well, a few months after each holiday, after they get these gifts, you can see an influx of pets being surrendered due to... Not someone not taking care of them. Kid didn't want them. The kid didn't want them. The parents don't can't don't want to don't have they don't have enough time for it. They weren't anticipating after like two weeks. Exactly. What was that? Um, Kid liked it until it pooped in his room, and then it was like I don't want to deal with it. Or yeah, it's Uh, not a well thought out decision. Right. Just not thinking. Just being like, oh, it's a pet. Right. So like, I'm not downing the the people who do get their kids pet. So like, say you've had a conversation with your significant other and your child and your child is responsible and they're like, let's get a hamster or a kitten. We've d- been discussing this for like six months on and off. Yeah. And it just so happens that Christmas is around the corner. Make the responsible decision and being like, okay, we're ready to get a pet. Right. But people who get pets just for gifts because it's cool and cute I can't stand because those pets tend to fall back going into the shelter yeah. or they're having to be rehomed. Um, it's just a horrible idea. No, I get it. I it's totally just a get horrible that. idea to do because you're not prepared for it. You just like the idea of getting this pet. And the, you, you would have no idea how many um, people buy ducks on for fucking Easter. I can imagine it's a lot. Or bunnies. Oh yeah, I've heard. Now I've heard about the bunnies a lot. I've heard. Oh like, my gosh! People get so many bunnies, and then they all just. I think wind we up. got like ten bunnies in twenty four hours, like six weeks after Easter one day. So man, and they were only like three months old. I have a couple of thoughts on that. So one, if you're actually prepared to share your home with an animal, don't fucking wait for like a holiday or a birthday. Like, go get it now and give it a nice place to live. So yeah. if you're going to be one of the good owners, if you're going to be responsible, if it, like, don't wait. Just find you, you can buy somebody a pair of underwear for Christmas. Go fucking give the animal a home now. You can buy me underwear. <clears throat> yeah. Grace will accept underwear. I love Victoria's Secret, size medium. And the size medium, as long as you don't return that fucking rabbit. <laughs> no, don't. And the thing is, is if you are thinking about getting an animal... For yourself or your significant other or for your child and you're being responsible and you've thought about it, go to a shelter or go and find yes. someone who is trying to rehome their animal. Do not go and buy one. Yes. Just don't. There are so many animals that in homes. shelters. Every county, almost, um, let me backtrack, almost every surrounding county here in Knox County around us has an animal shelter. And I can guarantee you they're overpopulated at this moment. Um, and they need you to come and adopt. That's true. And they also have a really good, I learned this in the last couple of years, all the animal shelters, even for surrounding, you can even search animal shelters in other parts of the state, like mm-hmm. in, in North Carolina or whatever. Um, I've actually had a couple of friends that particularly kept an eye on like animal shelters near Asheville because for some reason they were filling up a lot or there were a lot after the Smoky Mountain fires. Mm-hmm. A lot of animals showed up at shelters uh, in, in like Bristol. And anyway, but you can you can look on Facebook, you can look online, you can go and you can look at these shelters, and they keep a pretty good inventory online update of like what animals they've got, who all needs homes. Well, Sometimes the shel- they have pictures. Yeah, the shelter I worked at it was updated by the by the second as soon as an animal yeah. was available for adoption, it was uploaded with as much information as possible. Now, yeah. in most of these shelters, when you adopt these animals, they're coming spay, neutered, vaccinated. Yep. Um, you know, they're getting just the bare minimum of vet health, you know, just to basically yeah. get you out the door, but they're all, you know, deworm. I mean, you can't really beat it. No, I mean, you can't beat it. At all. And I want to say this too. If, if you've got pets, if they go outside, 
if you and, and again, there's a we can get into this. Like some people say that that if you have a pet, it only lives indoors. It's never going to procreate. Blah blah blah. That it may not be necessary to get it neutered, and that's that's up to the owner. There are benefits both ways. Yes, an if animal. If they're responsible, an animal does benefit over time from having all of its natural hormones and stuff. That actually can be good, but also their chance of cancer goes up if you don't have them fixed. So there's there's a push and pull. Uh, but if you're going to have an animal running around outside and there's any chance it's going to con- come in contact with another animal, just get the freaking thing fixed. Like, yeah, I can't tell just you, get it neutered. Dude, get I've, it seen, I've seen so many like kittens die outside for you. that just like, like and, and these are ones that even like came to me that I tried to take care of that like, like a tiny, very young female cat had kittens mm-hmm. outside my house uh, under my car and she was trying to take care of them and she herself was barely more than a kitten. Yeah. And then like I, I immediately like <clears throat> I caught him. I went and got him fixed. I returned him. I mean, I didn't have any place. To, I couldn't bring him in because I already have four rescue cats inside. Mm-hmm. But I kept them outside. I built a little house for them. I fed them. They tipped their ears so they knew they were fixed so nobody was going to want to. Did Williams see this? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the space Community shuttle. Cat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, they're, great. Think, they're great doing this. They're wonderful. It's like a huge, it's, I remember being there when we kicked it off community oh, yeah. cat program. Oh, it was incredible. Yeah. And I went, I went on and do you know that, uh, I looked at their schedule and I went wherever they were. I got the cat. Seven and you just morning. go online. Yeah. Uh, a six month old cat female can start giving birth and in heat season, which they go into heat whenever it's warm. Yeah. So how it is right now, even when it, when it hits 70 degrees, yeah. they can go into heat. In a season, they can have up to three litters. And every litter can be, is average three to four cats. Usually <laughs> more. Probably like six to eight. Well, this, Young Williams would get in about 5,000 kittens every kitten season. And Jesus. I mean, it was like we were running around with our heads. Like we, you know, we got their bo- baby bottle. We got to, yeah. we got to put, get them in foster. We got to make sure, yeah. you know, they're being bottle fed. Where's the mom? The mom is extremely feral. We got to tip her, put her in foster care so yeah. that she can feed the babies and then release her back out. It's a mess. It is a mess. And if you're just. Same with dogs. There's, there's a guy that lives near me and I hear. He has a whole bunch of cats, and they just keep reproducing. He doesn't mm-hmm. get any of them fixed. They've they've gotten to where they don't even. They just moved into this ditch near the bottom of the hill, and like every now and then they'll just be stray cat. I know that's where this mom got pregnant, and I had enough sense to like catch her, get her, and all the kittens fixed. Uh, only two of them made it, and only was able to find a home for one of them. Like her and one of the kittens still live outside. I mean, I take good care of them, but they're they would much rather have a home than be out there on like a, like a 27 degree night, like trying to get warm under the house. But my whole point is get, don't just let animals run around. Like no. do that. It's, it's not, it's irresponsible. It's irresponsible and it's cruel. And getting a dogs, a male dog neutered as well as getting a female spade really helps with behavioral problems. Yeah. You see it all the time. At least I see it all the time in my profession and, and doing what I did is, is if they have their balls and they're aggressive, that's why. Yeah. That's hey, well, why. As soon as we, we remove them and their aggression goes down, Yeah, you know, they don't want to fight everything. They don't, you know, they become a lot nicer uh, and it does help them w- with their health. Um, same with females. Um, and it needs to happen. I don't know if they still do this. They did this when I was there, but young Williams, if you let them know that there is a cat colony that you know of yeah, and you let them know. They have someone that they pay who will drive to that location and set up traps or you can do with animal control and they will trap them, fix them, give them their rabies shot and and then return them back to where they were found. Because why you do why you return them back to where they found is because if you remove that those cats more cats will come in. Will come in. So yeah. you want the cats that are originally there because it's keeping the population at bay and well, it will die and, down. And there's actually another thing too. Like I, I remember I told my neighbors, look, I was like, look, I don't want you to think these are my cats that are always up here on my porch and I'm feeding, <laughs> you know, but like they were, they're feral. And, but I like had them fixed so they can't have any kittens and they're not going to hurt anything. And if like, I'm going to try to find homes for them. And the neighbor was like, don't do it. At least let them live out here. We'll help take care of them too. But like, we haven't seen a mouse or anything in yeah, they're eight great months. With varmints, yeah, they anything, keep all the crap do. away. So it's not bad to have, if you have a feral cat colony. It's actually not bad 
for the environment or for your your situation. But people just, who love birds would disagree with you. But well, birds bird, can fly. The birds got to stay away from the ground. <laughs> just bro. stay away from the damn cats. I have a, I I have a say, bird feeder outside too, and at first it felt like cruelty. I, and I was like, you guys just got to be smart enough not to fly. And then I just be smart. If I keep the cats fed, they're not going to go after the birds. That I mean, much. they might. They, they might not. Them. I will say, I am more terrified of a feral cat than a rabid dog. 100% because like, I've been fucked up by a feral cat. I'm, a, I'm highly allergic to cats. Oh, wow. So just being bit or scratched fucks my world news, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, dude, they are fucking vicious. I would rather be toe-to-toe with a, a dog like, than a fucking mad-ass feral cat. cat. There was a, God. There, was a, there used to be a feral colony that a very, very faint. Like, people would try to go catch them all the time right over here on the corner of, like, Paper Mill and Kingston mm-hmm. Pike before they redid that whole thing near uh, near near P.F. Chang's. Mm-hmm. And my buddy and I, one time, were like, we at some point we had a cat or it died or something. We're both in it. He's like, dude, let's go get a cat. Let's get a new kitten. And I go, where are we going? He goes, let's go get one out of that like ditch, the, all those cats over there. And I was like, you think you can get one? He goes, I could totally get one. He had like a thick leather like biker jacket on. Is that what he thought? Bro. He thought? We got close to one and they were so <laughs> tiny and they were just sitting there they looked like a card. They looked like a like a Hallmark card. Aww. They were just like, Meow. and he reached in. Still, the cats didn't do a thing. They were just like, and then like he got his hand near and it bit. He grabbed one of them and it bit all the way through his leather jacket into his thumb. They're sharp fucking teeth. And then he let go of it, but it wouldn't let go. <laughs> it clung to his arm and clawed his entire arm up. And finally, he had to just like shake it off, and then it just sat there quietly again. But I mean, it, he could have easily reached into like a lawnmower and come out less battered up than this like tiny dude. Cats kid. will fuck you up. Yeah, they will fuck you your world up. That's why I try to befriend them so that they're on my side. I love cats. I love them so much. I just can't see. I used to not be allergic, but yeah. it was like when I, once I when as soon as I turned eighteen, it was like. That's weird. Let's fuck Grace's world up. She can't. <laughs> she can't fucking love cats at all. I had cats growing up, and uh, so now I can't even like love on one without blowing up like a balloon That's sad. and not. Being well, I, when I was younger, I used to be allergic to dogs, and so if I petted somebody's dog or if it licked me, mm-hmm. I would break out or whatever. And so now I'm not having. I, I'm pretty sure that's gone now because like I, I pet your dog and I pet other people's dogs and they turn out okay, which is good because I love to be friends with the dogs again. Yeah, I just love all animals. But don't buy thing. animals for gifts at Christmas, y'all. Just don't. Just Or wait. you know what? If you do, fucking commit. Like if you yeah. buy your kid a duck. Don't be it for your kid. Be it, Make it for you. Yeah. Like, yeah, it needs to be for the adult. If you guys bring a rabbit into the household and then the kid loses interest in it and goes back to the iPad or whatever like that, fucking take care of that rabbit. Like do the right thing. Don't just dump it off again like, you know. Mm-hmm. That, I hope people do that. Some I think people, people they should just be responsible. I agree. When, and you know, these are, With these life. are, this is a life and it's a commitment, a lifetime commitment. That's, that's what an animal is. I mean, and you're bringing it into your home. It's a responsibility that now you have. Yeah. I don't know. I, I mean, I, I, and it's actually a good opportunity to teach kids about responsibility, you know, but, but remember you're the adult. They're the child. Ultimately it is your responsibility. So that's don't right. make it be like, I don't have time. If you if you don't have time, then just don't get it. Don't get it because the key can't count on the kid to necessarily take care of it, and it can't do it itself. (laughs) I'll never forget my mom telling me. My mom came to my house one time, and like I had been very irresponsible cleaning the cat tray out, like it Mm -hmm. was really bad. And I was just like, whatever. I was living with like a couple of dudes, and we were all just like, it was just like a bachelor (laughs) pad, like playing video games. There's pizza everywhere, and like beer cans. What? And she came over and she's like, your your cat box is really bad. And I was like, whatever, mom, I'll get to it. Like, sometimes I just pour more litter on top of it if I don't have time, like, because we're playing Halo or something. And she was like, and she got real serious. And she looked at me. She goes, you know, they can't do it for themselves. Mm-hmm. They can't change their own litter box. Like they, and I was just, she got real serious. And I was like, I felt so fucking bad. And ever since then, I've just been like, anything the animal can't do, I'm very careful. Yeah, they, like, can't, they literally, you know, Finn relies on me for everything. He yeah. can't feed himself. He can't get yeah. his own water. I mean, he and needs it's me worth to let it. him out. Bro, pets are worth it. They They're worth so it. worth it. They're great. And they help, they, they help so much um, with your mental health and just Amen. every day. And it is said that a person with a pet, it adds like seven years to your life. Oh, that's good to know. And it re- actually reduces stress. So if you have like 
high cholesterol or like really bad heart problems and you get yourself a pet, it's going to make you have to like walk or be active and do things. But it also lowers that stress. So the likelihood of you having a heart attack because you're so stressed out might go down. I know that I'm definitely the happiest. Let me think. No, probably. Well, unless we're like rehearsing and playing music, like Mm -hmm. I'm generally the happiest I could possibly be when I'm playing music with my friends. But either equal to that or very close to that is if like I'm about to get out of bed and I Mm -hmm. look and there's like four cats in the bed and I climb back in the bed and just bury my face in one of them. That's about as happy as I can get. See, that's yeah. just how I am when yeah. Finn decides it, like, that he'll come <laughs> into bed until he claws you. Yeah, until it gets mad and <laughs> wants me to go away and it scratches my ass. <laughs> Man, I am still sore from uh, that concert. Talked about, yeah, you went to the White Chapel show. Yeah, I am so sore. And not only you, but a bunch of people were like, whoa, this yeah. is the best we've ever seen them. They Dude, said. it was a fucking amazing. It was awesome. All the band, local bands did great. I mean, White Chapel, they're local too. So like everyone, yeah. everyone did awesome. Um, yeah, it made a very big impression on you and our buddy Will from Central Depot and, and, and a lot of other people I know too. It was great. And apparently they threw down. I'm sad that I missed it. They did. They threw down. I was in the mosh pit. Got whacked around a bit. Just in man. there. Just let's fucking go. Got elbowed in the face by some guy trying to fight some other dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'm just like, I get hit in the head. It's just, you know, but, I I'm, still, but I'm still sore from it. Like my neck's like whiplash. Rock just neck. Like, ah, yeah. You know. That's you the know, thing is, it, it, that stuff stays fun. Like mm-hmm. I grew up, I grew up in so many mosh pits. Like, I, and I, I was in, we used to be in like weird mosh pits that had like full of skinheads and stuff, mm-hmm. like, like real skinheads with like red suspenders. And like, they were like, like Nazis. Yeah. Like Nazis, uh, that just Aryan randomly, went, huh? Like, Ari- like, yeah, like, like Aryan, like Aryan dudes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, and really, really, they, they were just people that were lost, you know, like, like some of them I had been to high school with and they just went off the radar for a couple of years and you see them, they turn back up and they're in like a gang of these Nazi skinheads or whatever. And they're kind of the same guy, but they just found somewhere to belong. I don't think they're just trying to belong somewhere. I don't think they really meant it, but they were, they were violent. Even though they're wrong. They're totally wrong. But, but the music that we wanted to see, like the really crazy fast, mm -hmm. like thrash metal type, anything sounded a lot like what they wanted to go listen to it. the, The line between like metal and, uh, like hardcore is very thin. And so mm-hmm. in fact, my, some of my favorite music is where it blurs uh, bands that are maybe hardcore, but maybe they're metal too. And you don't really know like and stuff like, like hate breed or, or, or the Bronx or bands like that. But we would do anything we had. We were so into music and a lot of our friends played in bands like that. We would go anywhere. We would go to like a church basement. We would go to a crappy club on the street. We would sneak in even though we weren't 21. I mean, anything. And we would fight to be on the front row just to watch the guitar players or mm-hmm. whoever was doing Like we were there to study. Like for us, this was like an institution. And we wanted to know everything that was going on. How fast did they play? How did they do it? Where is he playing? How is he playing the guitar? What gear is he using? We needed to be up front. We were there to study. You know, but in order to get up front at a crazy concert like that, you had to fight your way through the mosh pit, and it was full of crazy skinheads. So, like, that was like a weekly occurrence for us. And we got, I had black eyes and like a cracked rib and like all kinds of stuff, and it was all worth it. It totally. is. I'm not regretting it. I'm just sore. I just remember driving and needing to look behind me, and I can't turn my head, so I have to turn my entire body. <laughs> like, yeah, like original Batman. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> well, and that's the thing is, it gets. I also felt that way about when we would play gigs, like gigs could take a lot out of you. And if you do Mm -hmm. it right, you feel it the next day. Mm -hmm. Um, But also it's not just that you, you, when you're in like a local band, you do the gig and hopefully you, if you leave it on the stage, you're sore and everything. Um, But then you have to move all your gear and you have to load everything up and then you have to take it back like here and unload it. So there's like a, it's a long process and you feel tired the next day. But as you get older that next day lasts for like a week. Yeah. And it's just, you, you just tell your shit where it's. <laughs> yeah. Cause I used to like go to, I remember when Blue Cats was around, but I used to like go to shows and oh, yeah. I'd be in the mosh pit and just be fucking rocking out, yeah, man. Blue Cats and was like, our stomping The next too. day I would still be like really sore, you know, being like, oh man. But it's like today is what, Tuesday? Yeah. And the show is Friday? <laughs> yeah. I'm still hurting uh, everywhere. Yeah. Like, you're getting there, babe. God. You're getting there. I'm getting old. Old, old, old. No, but it, it was a, it was a good time. It was a good show. That's and it was that their Toys for Tots thing that they yeah, always they did it for Young Williams. Okay, okay. So I knew that they. Yeah. I know that the annual Whitechapel show is typically like a some kind of a benefit. Yeah. And they donated. They did this one for Young Williams. That's badass. Yeah. Shit. So um, 
Christmas, let's, let's do this. Since some people may be listening to this on Christmas or Christmas Eve or whenever my dead ass gets it edited and put up. <laughs> Thanks for your patience, y'all. Y'all the best. <laughs> um, Christmas movies. What are your go-tos? Oh, I have so many. Um, Give me a top, top f- fucking, is five possible? Top five? Can I have do to- so many. Let's do a top seven. Top seven? Yeah. Uh, Grinch, both new and uh, with, with Jim Carrey and the old version okay. from like the 70s, 60s. Or the animated one? Yeah, the yeah, animated yeah. one. Uh, Elf. <laughs> Elf, Have I love, to. I love Elf. You got to get a little, a little, you know. Buddy the Elf. <laughs> you know, in there. A little syrup on your spaghetti. Yeah, you got to like, you know. Um, Home Alone. Yeah. How can you not? Uh, a classic. Uh, it's a Wonderful Life. That would oh. say it's one of my favorites. I remember I like I the black first, and white version. Oh yeah. When I first saw that, I had heard about it for years growing mm-hmm. up. Like it was referenced in pop culture. I just never saw it. My family never was like, let's all watch a movie together. And like, I remember one day, I, I think I was probably like a teenager when I first saw It's a Wonderful Life and it fucked me up. I got so yeah, sad and emotional. I cried. I was it's like, "It's a great fucking movie." Yeah. I got, I got. Um, my mom loves that movie. I got it on DVD when when people actually bought DVDs uh, yeah. back in the day and got her the color version. Um, so that's five. So that's that. Oh, we have five. Um, you got two more, and, it, and it's okay oh if you God. omit something. There's the old ones. There's all the the Rudolphs and the Frost and the uh, and the clay or the yeah, stop animation. I can't. With the, the Bumble, the fucking Bumble, mm-hmm. Bumble's bounce, and that the yeah, Rudolph animation. Mr. Freeze. Yeah. Oh yeah, dude. Yeah. That, so that's the abominable snowman. It's incredible, incredible. I have that. That's my laptop screensaver at work right now. Oh, is it? Yeah. <laughs> with the, the the prospector guy and the and Rudolph mm-hmm. uh, and the snowman. Uh, so that's six. If you had to pick one more. One more Christmas movie. I feel like there's one that's just like, Grace, how are you not? And obviously, if we made it, we could make a very detailed list of probably 50 really good Christmas movies, but this is just kind of off the top of your head. What do you got? So I would probably say for Christmas movies, um, what do I want to watch every Christmas? I start <gasps> Christmas Story. Christmas Story. Christmas okay. Story. <clears throat> that was going to be probably... My number one was Christmas Story. Um, I used to like it more than I do. Like it used to be, I used to watch it over and over and over again. Like it's it, my they dad's had, favorite. They would do a thing where it was on twenty four hour like a loop, and mm-hmm. I would just I would literally watch it come on and like go off and watch it come on and go off. And then, like about a year ago, I watched it and I was like, oh, this isn't as funny now. I don't know what you watch it so much because they put it on a loop. Yeah, for twenty four hours. But I would still say it's it's super super funny. And the dad, the dad wrecks. The dad's hilarious. The I love lamp. the pink, the pink uh, bunny dude. that the aunt made him. I feel that because my mom used to make me put shit on it. It's fucking so, And wear. when the dogs come and they get his turkey mm-hmm. and he goes, sons of bitches, purposes. Like uh, <laughs> that fucking dad, I can't, they go to that Chinese restaurant. Like it's almost more fun to talk about it than it is. But, but, but still it's spectacular. So I'm going to say Christmas story. I'll also say elf. Um, <laughs> there's one for me. There's one I watch that is not a good movie, and it's like it's like crack. I can't turn it off. I can't escape. What? Jingle all the way with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh my god! <laughs> fucking love that movie. <laughs> Where he's yes. Turbo Man. I'm turbo Man. <laughs> he doesn't even. He's like he's trying to play an American suburban Aaron. dad, and his accent doesn't change at all. I love you. I have to get the Turbo Man for my child. <laughs> <laughs> and it's so re- he's fighting Sinbad the mailman. Yes. <laughs> it's so fucking ridiculous. And then he becomes Turbo Man kind of just so the kid knows that he loves. It's so I've yes, that movie is great. Great steel. There is a scene in Jingle. You see I'm getting I'm getting fucked up over this right you now. Get, let's go. I'm you get I'm excited. Hot. I'm fucking yeah. There's a scene in Jingle all the way where he knocks out a reindeer oh. and then gets drunk with it. Yes. I was, he gives it beer and they yeah. sit on a porch and he's like, sorry, I hit you and it, and it goes <laughs> <laughs> And that guy became the governor of California. He did. Motherfuck. God, so geez. you can do anything in California. <laughs> Fuck. Apparently these are, no <laughs> what are they, they just out there fucking in their own little country. I doing mean, whatever the fuck they want to do. And they're so another one that, uh, 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 so a lot of people don't count this, but I consider gremlins a Christmas movie because it happens around Christmas time. So I actually like are you gremlins. One of those that say die hard too is a Christmas movie. Cause it so, happens around Christmas. So, I know a lot of people that feel both ways, but I'm going to have to tell you, I feel like this year the case closed because there's so many memes 
about Bruce Willis at Christmas, like in the vent, climbing out of the building. In fact, our drummer, Brandon Lee, shout out, has a thing in his office. He goes, hey, I put my Christmas decorations up, and it's a vent with Bruce Willis crawling out of it. <laughs> and also, I saw a meme where they're talking about, don't forget to leave cigarettes and a bullet in the like air duct for Bruce Willis this Christmas Eve. <laughs> like, he's Santa. So I feel like, I feel like the case is close. I feel like Die Hard is definitely a Christmas movie. But... Do you think uh, Nightmare Before Christmas is a Christmas movie, or, or do you think it's movie. more of a Halloween movie? Honestly, I think it's more of a Halloween movie to me. Yeah, I associate Jack Skellington and all those characters with Halloween, but right. honestly, neither one of those are like in my top ten. They're both great movies, but they're just not things I look at all the time. So I'm going to say, It's a Wonderful Life definitely wrecks me every time, and. I'm having a hard time. I forgot one what? that's like up there. Get it. The Muppets Christmas Carol. Damn. Or, oh, the Christmas, Christmas Vacation. Yeah. Oh, my God. God. That one, too. Ugh, put a bullet in between my eyes. How did I forget that one? So that one. So that, that yeah, I feel like we have most of the big same ones. Um, partic- and, and actually, like, White Christmas with Bing Crosby. I actually like it. <gasps> I do. I love White yeah, Christmas. That's a good one. That too. is a great one. And what are some other good... There's a lot of good Christmas movies. You know, The Shining could be considered a Christmas movie. Fuck yeah, I like the way you're thinking. <laughs> Damn right. Yeah. So those are those are good... Man- I feel like that's some good mandatory Christmas material. It, it'd be awesome if you got to watch all those in a row. Like if it started off in the morning with something a little light like Elf, and then the Christmas story, and it kind of goes... I'm like, doing that this week. I'm going to like... I'm, I'm going to text my... You're going to go through... My friend and be like, hey. Can we put the movies we usually watch on hold and like let's do a marathon of some Christmas? But he doesn't watch Christmas movies. He's Jewish. Oh shit! What do they watch? It's okay. Seinfeld. <laughs> <laughs> Festivus. Oh my god, the Seinfeld Festivus episode. Do you remember that? Where they put that pole yeah. up and they get mad at each they, the airing of grievances. <laughs> Holy shit. Um. No. Yeah, but you know, I will say something about uh, Christmas. Um, and, and getting older, I am an amazing gift wrapper. I am not. I Let suck at making my own bows. You noticed that? But I'm good you saw at me, it. You saw me today give three people a, a bag. Gifts in a their bag. bags. And now I have done gift wrapping, and some of it turned out kind of okay in the past. And I will say this: I love the look of wrapped presents, mm-hmm. especially stacked under up. a tree or, or anywhere. Just well, a car, anywhere, yeah. A box full of them in the car, going somewhere or just on the counter ready to go. I Mm -hmm. I think they look amazing, but boy, I suck ass at wrapping presents. Grace Steele, what is your secret for the listeners? What's the secret to wrapping good presents? I don't even know if YouTube. YouTube. No, I just, I've just done it my whole life. I never get the corners. Like I always, there's two ways that you can do it. And there's also there's tricks because when you're like, Oh, this is uneven. There's more paper over here. You just fold it. Just fold the paper. Just fold the paper in. Just fold that little nook in. And then it's and it's perfect. See, I'll, and tape and tape is your friend I because often, it holds paper in place. I'm often wrapping something that's like rectangular, like a like a, a large book or like a, a typical board game, or just think of like a, a I don't know, like like a box like that maybe like apples to apples or cards yeah. against humanity or just the standard rectangular box. And I pull the wrapping paper off, and I so I can get the first layer where you go just around and tape it. But then there's all this excess on both sides, and I usually wind up trying to cut some of it off. That's like the worst thing is once you have it folded, you cannot cut the excess. You've got to you got to look at it and eye it right. But if you find yourself in that situation, what you do is exactly what I just said. You put down the edges and you just fold the excess paper and you just tape it there and then you can fold it up. But I will say, I never every year when I wrap presents, without a doubt. I will get a paper cut and it is the worst Christmas paper cut. It is the fucking worst getting a paper cut and it always happens on cause I'm wrapping present Christmas. Bro, I will tell and you. it's always in between my finger, like the webbing of your finger, <laughs> the worst I got the worst thing. It's kind of like a paper cut. I was th- this week repairing a, I don't recommend anybody ever does this either because I, I literally wanted to end it. I thought I was going to go down. <laughs> I said, this is it. I don't want my future. I'm just going <laughs> to, I was repairing a dryer vent mm-hmm. and I had so much anxiety because they're supposed to start. If you don't do it right, you'll start a fire. And I'm that guy that's always like running out of the house, leaving the dryer on. And I know that's not a good idea, but like I'm, I'm always just so like pressed for time. I'm leaving the dryer on or I'm putting things in the dryer and going to bed. So I want to make sure my vent is clear so I don't get a dryer fire. So I'm back there like it 
I had to replace the vent because it had ripped or something. And I had that metal tape, and I got three or four cuts from the side of that metal tape. It, oh my God, I felt like somebody had pierced my soul. Ugh. It was awful. It was, it was like, it possibly could have been worse if I was on fire, but I don't know. God, they're the worst. They're, yeah, they're, 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 like an, they're an annoyance, but they're so painful. Yes. And then you put your hand in something like that's, that burns. I'll forget and like I'll be touching lemons, <sighs> taking fingernail polish off. Fuck that. <clears throat> what are some other Christmas traditions? My uh, family doesn't really have traditions. We did with on, like with the kids, like, you know, Santa and Candy Cane, the elf, but now we don't do it. Um, we put out, like, my mom has a thing, but she puts out the same decorations. She has this, she likes, she has this bear. Uh, collection every year it comes out with a new bear it's like that um she cooks but we don't really have like a like traditions when it comes i got you man now I, mean, that I think about it, that sucks well you know i mean i don't know one of my i told you right before we started recording one of my favorite traditions is just to like get some fucking rest stay yeah. in my pajamas binge some good christmas movies have some fudge or something some fudge. Fudge. sometimes i fudge but just anything to just kind of take it easy. But then also like to, I mean, these days so much happens on the phone. So you're getting Christmas. Like I have a lot of people that send me funny shit on Christmas, you know, and like, so you've kind of got that and you can call the relatives and stuff. So, you know, like I try to just do it the right way, but not overstress about it. That's, that's kind of one thing I've finally kind of learned to do as I got a little older was to not stress about holidays. And I'm really bad about stressing on vacations. Like I want to, well, I'll go on a vacation. I want to plan all this shit out. I want to cram as much into it. And that's the wrong way to go on a vacation. You can't just sit and be still. I can now, but before I would like, okay, this day we're going here, this day we're going there. I would look, I would look up maps. Itinerary. Yeah. Well, kind of, but I just want to do this this day. I want to do that. I want to go to this coffee shop. I want to go to this place. I get that. But, but, um, I've learned to relax in holidays and in that kind of stuff. Cause well, something we, and we've talked about like normalizing mental health and therapy and stuff. But while, while doing some therapy, I learned that like everything that happens in your life is for you. Like your whole life is your personal experience. Yeah. It's taken me so long to realize that I've really got to stop giving a fucking shit. What my friends and family it's think so you. much because what's what, what I am doing in life is my own experiences and for myself. Cause I'm constantly like, you know, I feel guilty for something I've done in my past. And so I feel like I like owe it to like my family and friends to like, yeah. you know, fix that issue and to be better. And it's like, now that I've gotten a little bit older, it's kind of like, fuck it. Like you're either like, you love me. Like I'm not hurting you anymore. Like, but I, I'm going to stop doing this for you. Every experience is for me. Yeah. Um, Your whole life is for you. Yeah. Uh, and that, that can be taken a couple. I don't want to, I don't want to. That can be a little convoluted. I don't want I don't want to misspeak when I say that. But what I mean by that is like this moment. All that remember I said that thing about like you spend your whole life within six feet of yourself. Mm-hmm. So your immediate environment is your entire life. Like if you're, it's like yeah. you're in this little bubble, and everything you experience from the moment you're born to the moment you die occurs right there around you. And if you're so focused on like like you said, reflecting on things, feeling guilty, looking back, I should have done this or whatever, and then. All of a sudden, looking too far ahead, you miss the present moment. Right. You you miss the chance to like like you were talking about, to appreciate like your pets, or a good movie, or just something nice. The sun mm-hmm. coming through the windows, you know, lighting the room, just any little thing. Like I just sound like a freaking hippie now, but but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> <clears throat> I, yeah, no, I do, and and it always as long as you you're respecting others and you're courteous of them. Right. Your experiences are your own, and those are the things that you should treasure in there for yourself. Absolutely. Just like someone else's experiences, that is for them. Yeah. You know, I'm not trying to barge my way in on your experience, buddy. Yeah, and so I, th- I would advise anybody if you're kind of if the holidays stress you out or things like that to remind yourself, like this is for me, like mm-hmm. today is for me. Like I can enjoy if I want to sit here and like listen to the radio, listen to Christmas music, or if I want to like just sit here and have a cup of cocoa or whatever coffee or whatever. Just watch, look at the tree, watch the fucking lights change color. I agree. If you, it's good to have a little bit of that like peace. We everything moves at the speed of light so much mm-hmm. these days. We're taking in so much more information than we did even a hundred years ago. Uh, I think somebody told us, uh, I saw a stat that like, there was a point where like when the printing press was really big and the newspapers had just started to like blow up all over the United States. Uh, and, and most people's source of daily information was like the New York Times. 
and people would read it just to see what was going on. There was no internet, you know, very little, there was either no or very little TV. Now, I think we take in like in, I, I want, I wanted to say like, uh, God, I can't remember what it was, but basically like every 15 minutes we get as much information as an entire New York Times Sunday edition newspaper I can believe 100 that. years ago. And we just get that all the time. Yeah. So our, we, we No wonder deal, we're dumber. We deal with a lot <laughs> more shit and you have to find a lightning rod. You have to find something that like yes. grounds you to the world so that you don't just feel like you're spiraling out of control all the time. And so if, if, if I had to wish anything for our listeners and everybody like this holiday season, I would wish that you just like, don't forget to enjoy yourself. Yeah. Don't let the relative or the whatever stress you out. Don't let the New Year's and you feeling like you have to make a goal yeah. or like a New Year's resolution because you don't. Yeah. Just focus on yourself or your family or your pets or whatever is around you and take it easy. These last few days that we have in 2021. Yeah. You know, make that experience about yourself. Absolutely. I want to give. And give, and and give, give. back. Do you, even if it's something small. I agree. I think that's a good, probably a good thought to sort of wrap it up on. But I will say this. Uh, if you do need something to look forward to, we have already recorded a raging, <laughs> a raging, throbbing two-parter. <laughs> <laughs> we recorded a raging duo. Um, and the next is, so some, we're planning on releasing that probably sometime around New Year's. Mm -hmm. So this is your Christmas episode, and we're going to have a double whammy Beacon House episode coming out. Uh, for the new year. It will be good. It will be good. So there. Yeah. I guess next time that uh, we sit in front of each other and we're here, it will be a new year, 2022. That's very, yes, that's very true, likely. Oh, goodness. Yeah. What the hell's 2022 going to be like? Hopefully the world will end. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just ready. I'm just ready. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. All right, everybody. We'll see you soon. Be safe. Be good to each other. Oh, my.